In this video, we're going to talk about the difference between aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration occurs without oxygen. And so that's the key difference between these two processes. Cellular respiration, which converts glucose into carbon dioxide and water, that is an example of aerobic respiration. So in that process, we start with glucose. And in glycolysis, glucose is converted into pyruvate. Now, glycolysis doesn't require oxygen, by the way. But the other steps will. That is, once we get to the electron transport chain. Pyruvate is converted into acetylcholine A during pyruvic um, oxidation. And then in the Krebs cycle, acetylcholenzyme A is oxidized to two carbon dioxide molecules. And the electrons that are removed from acetylcholenzyme A is used to reduce NAD plus into NADH and FAD into FADH2. So those electron carriers go to the electron transport chain and they give up their electrons to oxygen, which produces water. So in aerobic cellular respiration, glucose reacts with oxygen to ultimately produce carbon dioxide and water. Now I do want to add that one molecule of glucose yields two molecules of pyruvate, which yields two molecules of acetylcholenzyme A. And during pyruvate oxidation, we get one molecule of CO2. So for two pyruvate molecules, we would get two molecules of CO2 during oxidation and four molecules of CO2 during the Krebs cycle, which would equate to the six molecules of glucose. So the overall chemical equation for aerobic cellular respiration is this. We take one glucose molecule, C6H12O6, react it with six oxygen molecules to produce six CO2 molecules and six water molecules. So that's the overall chemical equation, which you can't see all of that from here. That's just a basic overview. Now, in anaerobic respiration, that is without oxygen, there's two common pathways you need to be familiar with. The first one is ethanol fermentation. Ethanol fermentation occurs when yeasts have access to glucose but do not have access to O2. The other one is lactic acid fermentation. So this form of anaerobic respiration occurs in your muscle cells. So let's say if you're working out and you're depleting the amount of oxygen in your muscle tissue, your body can switch to lactic acid fermentation to give your muscles the energy that it needs. So that's what you need to know about these two types of fermentation. Lactic acid fermentation occurs in your muscle cells, ethanol fermentation, typically occurs with fungi such as yeast. So let's begin our discussion with ethanol fermentation. Let's see what happens during this particular form of anaerobic respiration. So the first step is with glucose, C6H12O6. So keep in mind, glycolysis doesn't require oxygen to work. So during this first step, or during glycolysis, glucose is converted to two molecules of pyruvate. Pyruvate has a methyl group, a carbonyl group, and a carboxylate group. It's a three carbon ion. Now, in this process, that is in glycolysis, two molecules of ADP is converted to two molecules of ATP. And so this is the energy that we get from anaerobic respiration. Now, in order to generate those ATP molecules, Glycolysis reduces NAD plus into two molecules of NADH. Now, in order for the cell to keep making ATP without O2, we need to generate more of the NAD plus because as glycolysis continues, we're going to run out of NAD plus. So in the next step, we're going to convert pyruvate into two molecules 
of acetaldehyde. And this involves decarboxylation, that is the removal of carbon dioxide. So we're going to lose two carbon dioxide molecules for the two pyruvate ions that we have here. The final step is the reduction of acetaldehyde into ethanol. So this is our end product, ethanol. Now, in order to reduce ethanol, something has to be oxidized, and that something is NADH. So NADH is oxidized back into NAD+. Now, keep in mind, oxidation involves a loss of electrons. Reduction involves a gain of electrons. So now that we've regenerated NAD+, this can go back into glycolysis, thus allowing the cycle to continue, given all the ATP that we need for uh, the yeast cells to keep functioning. So that's how yeast cells can convert glucose into ethanol in the absence of O2. Now let's move on to lactic acid fermentation. Now this form of fermentation has some similarities to ethanol fermentation. The first step being glycolysis. So once again, we're going to start with glucose, and then we're going to convert it into two molecules of pyruvate. So this part is going to stay the same. And just like before, we're going to generate two molecules of ATP, and we are going to reduce two ions of NAD+, and to make that into two molecules of NADH. Now, just like before, in order for glycolysis to continue, we need to regenerate the NAD plus so that we can keep making ATP. So that's important. So the next step, we are going to reduce pyruvate into lactate. So notice what happened as we went from pyruvate to lactate. What is the difference between the two structures? So notice that the carbonyl group was reduced into an alcohol functional group. So if pyruvate is reduced to lactate, what is oxidized? In this case, it's going to be NADH. So two molecules of NADH is oxidized back into two ions of NAD+. And this is important because now the cycle can continue, and so we can regenerate the NAD+, that we need, so that we can keep making ATP in glycolysis. So both in lactic acid fermentation and in ethanol fermentation, we get two ATP molecules per glucose molecule. And keep in mind, this occurs in the tissues of muscle cells. So that's a basic review of ethanol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation, which are two forms of anaerobic respiration. Now let's work on some review questions. Let's see if you were paying attention. Number one, how many ATP molecules are generated from glucose during lactic acid fermentation? Is it 2, 6, 18, 36, or 38? What would you say? Feel free to pause the video if you want to try it. The answer is two. Both during lactic acid fermentation and ethanol fermentation, two molecules of ATP are produced. Now, in, a, in anaerobic cellular respiration, the maximum is 38 according to some textbooks. And some will say 36 if you take into account the two ATP molecules that are needed to transport pyruvate into the uh, mitochondria. So these numbers would occur for cellular respiration. That's how much ATP can be produced during that event. But during lactic acid fermentation, the answer is A. Number two, which of the following statements is false? So go ahead and pause the video again. Take a minute to work on this example. So let's start with answer choice A. Aerobic cellular respiration requires O2 to occur. This is a true statement, so we can eliminate this answer. This is the conversion of glucose 
into carbon dioxide and water using oxygen. So it's C6H12O6 plus O2. Turn it into CO2 and water. So that's aerobic cellular respiration. Now for B, ethanol fermentation is a form of anaerobic respiration. That's true. For yeast cells to convert glucose into ethanol, they do not require the use of O2. So that's a type of anaerobic respiration. Now, C, lactic acid fermentation occurs in the tissues of muscle cells. That is true. That's just one of those things that you need to know. When you're working out and you burn up all your oxygen supply in your muscle tissues, you get the buildup of lactate, and then eventually you feel tired. D, lactic acid fermentation produces CO2, which we release during exhalation. Now, while it's true that we do breathe out CO2, CO2 is not produced in lactic acid fermentation. So D is false, which is the answer we're looking for. So to review, during lactic acid fermentation, we have glucose converted into two molecules of pyruvate. And then from pyruvate, we get lactate, two molecules of lactate. Now in ethanol fermentation, we start with glucose, which turns into two molecules of pyruvate. And then that turns into two molecules of acetaldehyde, which becomes two molecules of ethanol. Now I'm going to draw pyruvate because here's what's important. Pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. Acetaldehyde is a two carbon molecule. To convert pyruvate into acetaldehyde, we need to lose a carbon. And so the carbon atom that we lose will be in the form of carbon dioxide. So it's important to understand that carbon dioxide is released during ethanol fermentation and not in lactic acid fermentation. Now let's move on to part E. Ethanol fermentation occurs in four steps. Is that true or false? This is step one, step two, step three. So this is false. It looks like there's two answers. So D and E. I should have put circle each one. So ethanol fermentation occurs in three steps. Lactic acid fermentation occurs, it occurs in two steps. So D and E are the correct answers. So that's it for this video. So now you understand the difference between aerobic respiration, which occurs with oxygen, and anaerobic respiration, which occurs without oxygen. And keep in mind, ethanol fermentation and lactic acid fermentation are two forms of anaerobic respiration.